Wild, DeAndre Hopkins, Adam Thielen, or Juju Smith-Schuster, T.Y. Hilton, even Kenny Galladay. Wow, Ravens have a nice, almost all-star list of wide receivers that they were interested in. Is Julio Jones going to be added to it? We'll see. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Raven here with another video and yes the Ravens are really interested in one Julio Jones this has been confirmed by multiple people including one Benjamin Albright and also Jay Glazer but will this interest amount to anything will this be another name added to that all-star lineup list of almost wide receivers for the Baltimore Ravens or will this thing actually get done well We'll see in the near future, but before we get into this, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Uh, thank you for doing what you do, and just the Team Keep It Clean as a whole, make sure you tell somebody you love them today. And I know a lot of y'all are in an extra good mood, especially because it's draft day, so that should incite you even more to tell somebody that you love them and you appreciate them and you care about them. Now, with Julio Jones, man, if, if there's a will, if there's really a will, then there's certainly a way. And with Julio Jones, yeah, we know his cap numbers, what they would be, and they would be significant, but uh, his play would also be significant too. So if the Ravens are going to get this thing done, then they're going to get it done, and they're going to find a way to get it done. But I, I do appreciate, I, I do appreciate the interest, but the interest is not enough. It's not enough. But Something that we want to go back on, since the Ravens are interested in one Julio Jones, and they did contact the Falcons about what it would take to get a deal done, let's go back a little bit to remember Eric DaCosta in the pre-draft presser. Remember what he said? I'm insulted. I am insulted by what you guys are saying about my wide receivers. He was so insulted that he's inquiring about one Julio Jones. Smoke screen. Smoke screens. Liars luncheon is called that for a reason. So we hope that this thing can get moving and shaking with Julio. And we hope that maybe we maybe we have to have a conversation about who's going to wear the number 11 with the Baltimore Ravens. Hopefully we get to that point. Will they? I'm not getting my hopes up. I know a lot of y'all not getting your hopes up either. So we just got to be patient with it. And again, something to remember that with the Falcons, it's going to be a post June 1st trade. Whenever, whatever they do with Julio is going to be post June 1st. So in the trade, there would be no draft picks from this year to be included in that. None. Zero. Now, one thing that I've been seeing floating around that just boggles my brain and I just like, what do I need to like, what's going on? I saw some people put, oh, whoa, 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 would, would you trade Marlon Humphrey for Julio jump? Would, would you what? Have y'all been hanging out with Bucky Brooks or something? Would you trade Marlon Humphrey for Julio J What? Come on now, man. Like, let, let, let's, let's be real about this thing, man. Marlon Humphrey. Oh, goodness. Internet is crazy. The internet is crazy. Like, I, I've seen some crazy stuff, but recently that was like, whoa. Hold up now. But anyway... We just got to be patient with this whole Julio thing and see exactly where it takes us. Now, you know what? With this being the last video before the live stream for the draft tonight, and y'all make sure y'all come through. Team Keep It Clean, we're going to have a lot of fun like we do every year for the first round of the draft. But while I have you here, you know, let's just go ahead and do some questions from subscribers. Might as well, right? Let's get into it. And what questions from subscribers is, this is a series where you can ask me any question you want to based off of any NFL team, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of question from subscribers, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And while we're here, let's get into some questions. Speaking of Julio Jones, first question came from my boy Tom R. He said, hey, Engraven, I hope you and the family are doing well. Been watching for a long time. First time asking a question. First off, I want to thank you for all the positivity and light you bring to the Ravens flock and the YouTube community. I feel like good sportsmanship and treating everyone with respect is something frequently overlooked in a lot of sports media and definitely forgotten in most NFL stadiums. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, that's a big yikes there. Uh, I truly feel like the importance of what you have created with Team Keep It Clean with the message cannot be understated. 
It's a message that more people, and especially youth, in the sports world need to hear. I wish you the utmost success in any of your projects and endeavors, and I hope uh, as you reach, uh, as your reach grows, that more people will take a page out of your book and live life spreading more positivity. Oh, wow, Tom, I, I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you. He said, with that bit, bit out of the way, uh, on to my question. I have heard that due to a cap issue, the Falcons will not trade Julio Jones before the draft. That being said, they could very well be looking to make a trade for a difference-making defensive player. How would you feel if the Falcons were asking for one of our top-notch cornerbacks, say, Marlon Humphrey or Marcus Peters? Oh, I think we expressed that early on in the video. No, 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 and no. Uh, if that's the scenario, do you think we could possibly find replacements in the draft if we lose one of our veterans for Julio Jones? Um, yes, because that's what it's about. And Ravens, if Ravens know how to draft one and develop one thing, it's definitely cornerbacks and secondary. Um, well, cornerbacks, cornerbacks, cornerbacks. So, uh, but I, I, I would say no. Uh, but he said, is there are there any other players on the defense or offense that you could see potentially traded? I got a feeling that something big could come through. Ozzy Newsom has had his eye on Julio for a long time, and I could definitely see Eric DaCosta making a big move to make it happen. Thanks again for all your hard work. Appreciate you. Now, I appreciate you, and thank you for that, man. Um, but I just, ah, no, I, ah, no, no, I would say just draft picks. Just draft picks and yeah, just just draft picks because they're unloading his deal. With them unloading his deal, Marlon Humphrey, he just signed a big deal. They're not gonna unload Julio's deal and take on Marlon Humphrey's deal. And then with Marcus Peters, um, he has a significant cap charge as well. It ain't no Julio Jones cap charge, but they I just don't see them I wouldn't see them trading away Julio so they can get under the cap to acquire somebody that would be a large hit on the cap so if they did if the Ravens did trade a player uh to the Falcons it would have to be somebody on their rookie deal next question came from my guy Manuel he said what's up engraving shout out from Mexico my question might surprise you and team keep it clean but it's one that we do for fun but it would be an interesting one we joke about you being a media guy for the Ravens or a cornerback or even an assistant coach for Harbaugh and calling the right play <laughs> this guy but let's imagine for a second that engraving goes to train with Hollywood and Lamar and and gets into shape and proves his worth as an undrafted free agent what position do you see yourself playing and for how long or do you see yourself as a media guy for the ravens uh where you take in certain fan questions and answer them as you do with questions from subscribers stay safe and healthy and hey maybe down the line this would be true and you get a big break from the ravens oof to play oh that would take a lot that wouldn't only just take getting in shape that would take getting uh in stamina shape too because i can go out there and give you some good plays now i could do that no problem but how many good plays can I give you where I am actually able to <gasps> breathe? Um, so, yeah, it, it would probably just be media for me. But, um, I mean, you never know. You, you never know what could happen. But, I mean, what you're saying, we, we do this on here already. So, with the Ravens, I mean, you, you, you never know. You, you, you just you never know where life can take you you never know what opportunities can come about so uh we'll just see as things go along next question came from my boy deno g he said what are doing graven it's been a long time since i sent a question hopefully this gets out before thursday uh, about five minutes ago i saw the nfl post a linebacker draft class highlights on instagram and i was wondering what if the ravens go defense heavy first round how would you feel and do you think it's possible if the ravens use their first round draft pick on gregory russo or aziz ojulari i i do think that's a high possibility either one Especially uh, Greg Russo, he's, he's from Miami, and these are the Florida Ravens. So, anyway, I don't know if that's possible, but if so, OMG. Then address other needs through the draft, but secure that bag at pass rusher with younger, faster, versatile players. Or do you think the Ravens will go wide receiver O-line or wide receiver D-N? Just some pre-draft questions, and who do you think the Ravens will draft that wide receiver who fits into this style of offense? Hope the family is well, uh, and keep it up. And just like Orlando Brown is with the Ravens at left tackle and right tackle, I'm out. <laughs> this guy, man. <laughs> um, I think uh, for wide receiver, I think tonight could tell the story, and definitely early tomorrow. But tonight could tell the story on how interested or, or how deep they are in talks with the Atlanta Falcons if they don't take a wide receiver between tonight and tomorrow morning. I think that'll that'll let us know. That'll give us a little reminder. Um, but they could really go anywhere. They they could literally go anywhere in the first round tonight. They could take two people. They could take one person and trade back. They could trade back both picks. They could do so many different things. They could trade up. They they have options on what they can do. 
Uh, so nothing is set in stone and there is no one direction where you could all, all, also, uh, I mean, absolutely see the Ravens heading because is everything is open. Everything is a possibility, especially since they not only have one, but two first round draft picks. So I could see all of these things really happen. Next question came from my boy Javo. He said, draft day is tomorrow and I have a prospect for you to look up and give me your thoughts on. His name is Pat Fairmouth. He's a tight end from Penn State. He's big and physical and is compared to Gronk. How do you feel about us drafting him in the later rounds? Well, if that's the case and he is all of those things, I'm with it. I'm with it because he would add some some competition to that tight end room. Right now, we got the Josh Oliver, who we traded from from the Jacksonville Jaguars with that conditional pick. Uh, we got um, Eric Tomlinson. We got Jacob Breeland. We got Wolf. So we got some guys that uh, it's a lot of question marks after Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle. A lot of question marks. So. If he could come in and beat out those guys, hey, great. Or if we already got somebody in the building, hey, great. But if he's like a little baby Gronk, I mean, last person I heard that was like a little baby Gronk was Max Williams, and that ain't really work out too much for the Baltimore Ravens, but... We'll see how it goes. Next question came from my guy, uh, Schlove. He said, I ain't great, I'm a huge fan. Just wanted to let you know your subscribers are literally the best out there. Uh, only positive vibes coming from them, and I believe it's coming from your positivity. So keep it up. And now, oh, appreciate that, man. And team, keep it clean. Yeah, y'all are great, man. Y'all are great. He said, uh, now to my first question ever for team, keep it clean. I don't remember anyone asking you who your favorite NFL player is, so that's my question. Love your vids and keep up the great work. <laughs> <laughs> who my favorite NFL player is. Um, I would probably have to go with uh Lamar Lamar Jackson uh and Hollywood Brown. Uh Lamar Jackson just for um, and both of them they both from South Florida, so you know there's that kind of bias in there too. Um Lamar Jackson because of what he did uh, not only for the Ravens, but just the culture that he brought to the Ravens and, and him just um, having shown everybody like, hey, this is a kid from South Florida and he got a good vibe to him, always out there having fun. And just the, the energy that he brought to the Ravens and, and he made being a Raven fan. I mean, it, being a football fan is fun. Being a Raven fan is fun. But he made being a Raven fan even more fun, um, even more enjoyable. Um, and just it was somebody that you just felt like... Um, you could relate to uh just a bit a bit more um and he played the quarterback position he's the face of the franchise now um so that that was super cool and with hollywood uh for more for more personal reasons just uh what he um just what he's been willing to do just the the, the love that he's shown to the the channel on this episode of yeah, NFL man. questions from subscribers. Uh, uh, hey man, one thing about me, man, I mess with people who you know who always putting out positive energy, who, who, who love what they doing, who passionate about what they doing. Just a good person, bro. You too, team. Keep it clean. What's going on? The love that he's shown uh, to us and, and just the uh, the support, man. Um, because he ain't got to do none of that. He like that's that's not a requirement or anything like that, and he could have easily um, just glossed over us and whatever, be like oh whatever, and that wouldn't have been no problem. But he didn't, and, and for him to even take time like out of his day to uh, to to show support when he doesn't have to and when we don't ask for it either, uh, that that means a lot to me. So um yeah, it probably had to be Lamar in Hollywood, man. Next question came from my guy, Eddie A. He said, hey, Engraven, hope you and the fam are doing well. Oh, we're doing really good. Appreciate you. A lot of respect here from the UK Ravens, and please give a shout out to the UK Ravens. We're not many, but we're die hard, and I certainly love the work that you're doing. Hey, shout out to the UK Ravens. He said, you mentioned a couple weeks ago in one of your videos about the cap being cap, and I paused, and I thought about how teams like Kansas City and Tampa could keep, ta keep talent stacking, and they pretty much kept all of their starters on offense and defense, and it definitely had me thinking, why not us? It dawned on me how, bear with me here, the other day that the reason the teams are able to do this is because they sign players on long-term contracts. Most of them have figured out that you keep the value low as the cap will increase significantly over the duration of the players contracts with new tv and streaming money and other associated imaging rights oh you've been doing some research uh combined with paying most of the money straight up as a signing bonus and spreading guaranteed money over a couple of years it means teams won't be locked into contract negotiations merely restructuring the deal to make room if need be for more acquisitions like in the case of orlando brown jr who will probably get a mega deal so the player will never never actually be paid the current market value each year. They will be paid at the point of signing, and this actually is team friendly because you lock your assets down for a long term, 
uh, which then you can move around, although admittedly the players would need to agree. But with that, we've seen with Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, they are more happy to do that if there's promise of success. So I suppose my question to you is, do you see the Ravens adopting this approach, especially after they sign Lamar? Because it's not practical uh, to have a rebuild every five years. Ooh, that is a great question. Um, I, 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 I don't. I hope that they can figure out something, and I'm sure they will. Where they, where they can still sign Lamar to his deal, but then still sign significant players as well. Um, but I just, as of right now, I don't see it happening um, because it's like Lamar is not. He he's still on his rookie contract right now, and they haven't done any of that. And I mean, I know that this year was the first year that the cap ended up going down. Um, but still, like Lamar's still on his rookie contract and they didn't do it now. But like Patrick Mahomes, he's certainly not on his rookie contract and they're doing it over there. Well, he's still no, his his rookie contract is still counting on the cap as a rookie contract. His it hasn't escalated yet to the extension. But mm, yeah, I just I don't I don't I don't see them so I don't see them adapting to that strategy with the cap. I, I still see them continuing to do things uh, their own way. This question also came from my boy Manuel. He said, this is more so of a comment on what Bucky Brooks said about Lamar. They better check if he's team keep it clean because his ideas of getting rid of Lamar from Baltimore sound like he is not so team keep it clean. Uh, I'm convinced that Lamar has to do the impossible to shut down the narratives. He has to do what no one has ever done since Kurt Warner. Win the MVP and Super Bowl MVP the same year. And then if the narrative persists, it means that the NFL hates dual threat quarterbacks because it breaks their old world and they don't understand that the game is evolving. That still wouldn't even be enough. I told, I told you, it, 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 nothing is ever going to be enough. Nothing. And he says, stay safe and tell Hollywood that we're waiting for that Madden tiebreaker between you and him. <laughs> Next question came from my boy Rodell. He said, my guy, good afternoon. Hope all is well with you and the team. First off, just wanted to say thank you as your grind and consistency is out of this world. And I'm sure the team appreciates you. Now, I appreciate you. And I appreciate everybody, too. Thank you all. I right, said, so now, we can't honestly expect Lamar Jackson to take a team-friendly deal after winning the MVP and all the other accolades and success he's brought to us. I agree. Uh, not to mention essentially playing two positions. With that being said, could paying Lamar Jackson set us back? and hurt us now hear me out i don't 100 percent agree with bucky brooks however after listening to him and emmanuel acho talk about the situation i've learned some interesting things did you know of the last nine super bowl winners four uh went to brady which always takes a team friendly deal one to manning one to flacco on a rookie deal one to russell on a rookie deal one to wince on a rookie deal and one to mahomes on a rookie deal is that not a significant stat we know these QBs are commanding more and more money by the day, and that is going to cost the team somewhere down the line. We see the mistake we made after the Super Bowl paying Flacco. Lamar hasn't even gotten there, and Flacco's big contract could be Lamar's floor. Now, the Ravens are smart, and I'm sure uh, they wouldn't make the same mistake twice. But this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. As always, thanks and stay safe. Yeah, well, Lamar's contract, that, that, that is a statistic that um, it, it does get talked about a lot. Uh, with how uh, a lot of a lot of uh, teams they don't win a Super Bowl after they pay their quarterback, um, but with Lamar Jackson, would, would you really consider like letting him walk? Like think think about just be just so you can save some bread and then insert somebody else. Like Lamar Jackson, the thing with him is he's proven that he is the guy for the Baltimore Ravens, and he hadn't hasn't even hit his potential yet. He hasn't even hit his ceiling yet. He still has a lot more growing to do, and he can still get a lot better. Now, what I do think the Ravens will do, and I've been saying it for a while, well, not that he takes a team-friendly deal, but they work out something to where Lamar Jackson, he gets paid significantly, he gets paid, paid, but it's somewhere that it doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't hurt the Ravens, but it's something where the Ravens can still do some maneuvering. And I'm, again, you see, you see Kansas City, you see the Bucks, you see even the Saints too. Saints do this thing every year where it's like, oh man, the Saints they they over the cap. Oh man, these dudes they gonna have to cut everybody. And they don't be getting rid of nobody, man. They don't be getting rid of nobody. So it's like, man, what what they got going on over there? But so it, there are ways around it. So it's just up to the Ravens to find those ways around it while still taking care of Lamar Jackson. 
what Bucky Brooks was saying. Again, I understand the financial part of it. So you wouldn't have to invest all that money into one person being your quarterback because they take up a significant amount of money, a significant amount of the cap. But you cannot say that for no Lamar Jackson. He is not just any old quarterback out there. He's not just some random quarterback out there. No, with Lamar Jackson, that whole Bucky Brooks thing is irrelevant. It does not apply to him. It can apply to a lot of other teams, but for Lamar Jackson, that does not apply. It can't. So, and, and Ravens know what Lamar Jackson has done for them and will do for them, so they got to take care of him. Next question came from my boy uh, Reginald B. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are well. I have a question slash rant that's been talked about many times before, LOL. I feel like we have to go through this every year as Ravens fans, but why are analysts so quick to want to get rid of Lamar and not want to see him succeed? It's just a mystery to me. The whole Bucky Brooks video and comments he made last week has had me a little salty about it. No one talks about Danny Dimes and how his play is, or Sam Donald, Carson Wentz hasn't played well since his MVP type season, and he's just gotten sent to another team before last year no one said anything about josh allen in his first two couple of off years kyler murray was raved about last year to the point of them saying where he is a better version of lamar jackson but as soon as they weren't in the playoff race it was never spoken of again i wonder why but we have lamar jackson who's literally done nothing but win 30 and 7 as a starter and had a year of being a, a unanimous MVP. But there's people out here suggesting we should all of a sudden draft an unproven QB in Justin Fields when we're a couple of pieces away from a Super Bowl. It just boggles my mind. Lamar Jackson is literally the only reason that we're in playoff contention every year and the reason Harbaugh and Roman are even still employed by the Ravens. There's some fans out here who don't want to hear that, but it's the truth, LOL. I'm done with my rant, though, but I'm definitely going to need another shield to defend Lamar from all the daily slander. And yeah, with Lamar Jackson, it's... Like I said, nothing he does is going to be good enough. And I think one of the biggest reasons that so many people want him to fail is because he succeeded so much. And so many people just don't want to be wrong. People don't like being wrong. And, and not even that people don't like being wrong. People not only don't like being wrong, but they don't like admitting to when they were wrong. And some people just, they're waiting to be right. That's why every time that Lamar fails at something, every time that he ends up coming up short in something, people are like, ah, see, I told you so. See, I knew it. See, I knew he get, couldn't get it done. But when Lamar's out here doing his thing, they quiet. You don't hear a peep from him. Or sometimes you do hear a peep from him because they'll be like, oh, well, he didn't do this good. Well, oh, well, he needs to do this better. Oh, well, yeah. And I'm not saying that Lamar is, uh, is he's over or above criticism. Nah, I'm not saying that at all. But... Watch how people criticize him. Watch how they do it and listen to how they do it. You can always tell with, with people, with some, some players and whatnot, they'll give them excuses all day. They'll be like, oh, no, that's fine. Ain't no big deal. Oh, no, that's cool. But with Lamar, they'll be like, no, not good enough. That needs to get, no, no, that's not No, every time. Just watch out for it. Last questions came from my guy Rainmaker. He said, morning, hope all is well with you and yours. Uh, do you think the Ravens trade back with that 31st pick? Probably look to pick up two high second rounders and maybe another fourth or fifth to acquire more picks in a deep draft. Yeah, because you know the Ravens love them picks, so I can see that happening all day. I'm sure that has to be in play unless somebody is expecting or so somebody unexpected is falling in their range. That's how they got Lamar a couple years ago with the Eagles late first round pick, and I know EDC covers picks, and that would definitely be a Ravens move. Oh, yeah, you already know. You, you, you already know that that's Ravens all day. Ra Ravens, it's in their bloodline. Trade back. Oh, yeah, that's in our DNA. You already know. And he also said, uh, just a hypothetical here, but can you imagine Julio Jones on this team with Lamar, Sammy, Hollywood, Manjus on paper that would literally take our pass catchers from the bottom of the pack to top 10? That's the Kansas City style of offense that would make a serious threat for the Super Bowl. Plus, have, have Juju a little jealous in the process. <laughs> I think it's a pipe dream, but maybe you can speak it into existence. Anyway, keep up with the great work, and I'll be listening on draft day to get your thoughts on what our team is doing. And yes, tonight, man. So shout out to those of y'all that made it through this video. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And uh, yeah, tonight is the night. So we're going to have some fun. Um, yeah, the next time I see y'all, it'll be for the live stream. So I can't wait for it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Y'all make sure y'all come through. Uh, and we're going to have a good time. Team Keep It Clean, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We out.